What's up guys, today's video is on the top 5 best phones under $500 in 2023. Through extensive research and testing, I've put together a list of options that'll meet the needs of different types of buyers. So whether it's price, performance, or its particular use, we've got you covered. For more information on the products, I've included links in the description box down below, which are updated for the best prices. Like the video, comment and don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get started. Number 5 TCL 20 Pro From the stark contrast to the action-packed sequences, I really enjoyed watching the whole section on this phone. For $500, the TCL 20 Pro 5G has an awesome display, great for movies and games. In vivid mode, the TCL 20 Pro 5G managed 184% of the sRGB spectrum and 130.4% of the more challenging DCI P3 gamut. Our testing showed a Delta E score, where zero is perfect, of 0 0.28, which is a fairly standard ballpark for most phones nowadays. Compare that to the $500 Pixel 4a 5G, which netted 128.3% of the sRGB and 91.3% of the DCI P3 gamuts with a Delta E score of 0 0.3 that the TCL 20 Pro 5G has a 32MP front camera and 4 rear cameras, a 48MP primary shooter with optical image stabilization, a 16MP ultra-wide lens, a 2MP macro camera, and a 2MP depth sensor. The latter two are effectively useless, as we've seen time and time again with other budget and mid-range phones. In my opinion, they're included only so that TCL can say the phone has four cameras, inside, the TCL 20 Pro 5G once again did a fine job with these flowers. While it managed to capture the colors pretty well, TCL's cameras bumped up the exposure a bit too much given how bright the room was already. You only really noticed this when comparing it to the Pixel 5 shot, which is a bit dimmer but more accurate. The TCL's image is by no means bad, though, the TCL 20 Pro 5G supports up to 4K video at 30 frames per second in SDR, 1080p 30 with HDR. There's also EIS to keep things stable and a couple of other options like better motion capture and such. The one thing I noticed while recording my sample video was that the final footage looked overexposed, much like the very first image in our still camera face-off. Colors looked washed out, and I wasn't that happy with the final result. However, the EIS and two microphones did a good job at producing a stable video with decent sound quality. Overall, the TCL 20 Pro 5G is a respectable video recorder. The TCL 20 Pro 5G uses a Snapdragon 750G paired with 6GB of RAM. This processor is newer than the Snapdragon 765G in the Pixel 4a 5G, and they're neck and neck in terms of performance. The 765G has the slightest advantage in some tasks and is slightly more power efficient with its 7 nanometers process, versus the 8 nanometers in the 750G. But for all intents and purposes, both system on chips are equal when it comes to real world performance. Number 4 Motorola Moto G Stylus 5G While you won't get a button on the stylus or a robust suite of stylus related features compared to Samsung's flagship, the Stylus 5G has a small array of apps designed to use its accessory. Pop out the stylus from its slot on the right side of the bottom edge, and the phone opens the Notes app, by default, though you can set any app to open, for you to start writing or drawing. There are a few other apps that are meant to use the stylus, like categorizing entries and sending live written notes, as well as transcribing written words to text, a very notes-heavy experience. Having a stylus is a novelty and makes the stylus 5G stand out among competitors, but a more subtle combination of factors distinguish it, too. The 6.6-inch Full HD 2 400x1 080 pixel display is sharp and shows good detail for an IPS LCD. Though in side-by-side -side comparisons, premium phones with OLED displays had, unsurprisingly, more true-to-life color balance and slightly sharper detail. The Stylus 5G's screen tended toward brighter, overly vibrant levels of saturation. But for a $400 phone, I found it's a good screen for watching media, especially with its 120Hz maximum refresh rate that makes swiping through apps or scrolling across the web a buttery smooth experience. Add to that top and bottom stereo speakers that feel truly balanced and the Stylus 5G is great to use for watching shows or playing games. The Stylus 5G is also a respectably sleek phone for $400. At a distance, its matte rear cover looks metallic instead of plastic, as does its polished-looking plastic frame. The glass-covered square camera block on the back looks refined, and the lock button is large enough to double as a fingerprint scanner without being obnoxiously big. Like most phones with a stylus, 
when locked in the end of the stylus slightly protrudes so that you can push it in to extend the end cap enough to get a fingernail underneath to pry it out. This year's Stylus 5G has a 5000 mAh battery which, in my testing, often lasted for a full day of use and even well into the second day. The phone can recharge it up to 20 watts, but you wouldn't know that if you just use the basic 10 watt charger that came with the phone. In my tests, 30 minutes with the 10 watt charger juiced the phone up a measly 23%, from 5% to 28%. When I hooked it up to a charger supporting the phone's 20 watt maximum and it recharged 38%, from 28% to 66%, in the same amount of time that I end my 45-minute usage test, the battery started at 96% and dropped to 93% after 10 minutes of gaming. Number 3 Google Pixel 6a If you're familiar with the new look Google unveiled with its Pixel 6 phones, then the Pixel 6a holds no surprises. The back features the same two-tone design with a horizontal camera bar separating the brighter top portion from the more expansive muted color. In the case of the Pixel 6a, you get to choose from chalk, charcoal, and sage. The latter color was our review unit. Flip over the Pixel 6a, and it's a slightly smaller version of the regular Pixel 6, right down to the thin bezel surrounding its display and the punch hole cutout for the selfie cam in the center top of the screen. At 6x2.8x0.35 by by inches, the Pixel 6a is a little more compact than its 6.2x2.9x0.4 inch bigger sibling though not nearly as small as the 5.5x 2.7x 0.29-inch iPhone SE, 2022. I appreciate that Google continues to use OLED panels for its lower-cost Pixel A phones when makers of comparably priced handsets often turn to LCD. Someone draft a memo to Apple about the iPhone SE screen. OLEDs offer deeper blacks and better contrast, and that comes through when you're watching video or playing games on the Pixel 6a's 6.1-inch display. Watching Turning Red stream on Disney+, Plus, the titular panda's orangish-red fur displayed vibrantly across the Pixel 6a's screen. More impressively, all those textures that make a Pixar movie stand out rendered in fine detail on the phone's screen, from the lush fur to a green nightcap worn by one of Maylene's gal pals. Top and bottom speakers produce clear audio as well, though you can muffle those speakers when you're holding the Pixel 6a horizontally to play a game, the Pixel 6a maintains the two-camera setup that the Pixel 5a used, but there's a step back in the number of megapixels found on the ultra-wide angle lens. The 6a uses a 12MP sensor, compared to 16MP on the Pixel 5a. Number 2 Apple iPhone SE The iPhone SE, 2022, delivers flagship-level performance, thanks to its A15 Bionic chip, so you should expect iPhone 13-like speed when multitasking and playing games. 5G performance is solid. We saw close to 195 megabits per second downloads on T-Mobile. But you don't get Verizon Ultra Wideband support. 4.7 inches is tiny for a phone display in 2022, so you really need to want a small phone if you're shopping for the iPhone SE. The overall camera quality from the new iPhone SE is excellent and in many cases beats the Pixel 5a. But we wish there was a night mode. Picking up the iPhone SE, 2022, for me is like taking a trip back in time. There's a Touch ID button instead of Face ID, and the bezels around the display take up a lot of room compared to, say, the iPhone 13 mini or Google Pixel 5a, check out our iPhone SE, 2022, versus Google Pixel 5a face-off. Then again, this phone isn't designed for me. It's for people who like small phones and are probably stepping up from the iPhone 8 with the same size display and nearly the same design and this is definitely a compact device, weighing just 5.09 ounces and measuring 5.45 by 2.85 by 0.29 inches. It makes my iPhone 13 Pro Max look like a skyscraper, and I did appreciate using a phone I could easily slip in my pocket without being noticeable. Number 1 Samsung Galaxy A53 I can best describe the Galaxy A53's design as simple but effective. The plastic body feels nice and far from cheap, even if it does pick up fingerprint smudges rather easily. Overall, I find the phone to be solidly constructed, similar to the Pixel 5a the Galaxy A53's camera module sticks out slightly and looks a lot like the Galaxy S20 series, the contour cut design is apparently reserved for the latest Galaxy S phones. The Galaxy A53 is rather unassuming and honestly rather boring. It does feature an IP67 rating for water and dust resistance, meaning it can survive submersion up to 1 meter, 3 feet, for 30 minutes. 
The Galaxy A53 beats out the Pixel 5a and iPhone SE 2022 in the sRGB and DCI P3 gamut reproductions, even if its Delta E score, where zero is perfect, lags behind the color accuracy of the iPhone's display. Still, the Galaxy A53 screen is very nice to look at, the Galaxy A53 needs to prove itself when it comes to cameras, since the Pixel 5a and iPhone SE 2022 are stellar in this regard. The A53 sports a quad camera setup with a 64MP main sensor joined by 12MP ultrawide, 5MP macro, and 5MP depth shooters. Around front, you'll find a 32MP selfie cam, with its Exynos 1280 system on chip, the Galaxy A53 won't win any performance races. That said, the phone does fine in day-to-day -day use, though it's not the best gaming device you can get at this price. That title goes to the iPhone SE, 2022, with its A15 Bionic chip, the Galaxy A53 outperforms the Pixel 5a in every regard, though the latter features a chipset that's almost two years old. The A53 doesn't win by landslide, but it's nonetheless more powerful than the Snapdragon 765G powered Pixel 5a. Thank you watching this video do like and subscribe.